fellow comic enthusiasts, welcome back to HC Comics, your gateway to the colorful and captivating world of comics. Today, we're embarking on the next exciting chapter of this comic series together, wishing you all some relaxing moments as we dive in to HC Comics Adventure, returning to the main developments of the story. In this episode, we start with the scene. Alrighty guys, so we are back with another episode of Toontown Cassie in the Remarried Empress episode 152. A few days later in the Eastern Empire, still thinking about whether or not she's infertile, Henry walks in and he's like, I have some unpleasant news to share with you. I've been told that woman is plotting to your parents. Are you talking about Rashta? Why would she do that? Exactly, Navier. Why would you do that, Rashta? Okay? As we all can see, Navia is not thinking about you, so why would you do that? Why? Okay. I'm not sure. None of us are Henry. None of us. Even Mary, who had a little limb, is unsure as to why Rashta is bothering Navia's parents. Okay. Is she targeting them because she can't get to me? Or she probably sees my family as a threat to her child. If only your family cared, okay? Nobody in the Trovi family looks trash just way. So it's like, girl, you worried about nothing. That's my suspicion as well. And although Henry is like he has people who are gonna ensure that you know nothing happened to Navier's parents, Navier is like, I can't just do nothing. That's right, Navier, because in the words of Michelle Obama, when they go low, baby girl, you need to pop them in the throat or something like that. But Henry was shocked to see that she's getting involved. He's like, you genuinely avoided anything to do with her, even back in the Eastern Empire. And now you're getting involved? And she's like, yeah, true. I deliberately steer clear of her, but the circumstances have changed. That's right, Rashta, you want to play? Oh, you swear you a big girl. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Because the only reason why you thought you were ever winning was because Navier, okay, was purposely going out of her way to leave you alone. Now you want to start some shit. Okay, baby, let's start this. <laughs> when she was just a powerless mistress dependent on Sophia's shoe, he bore the responsibility for whatever she did. But now that she's an empress, she needs to be held accountable for her actions. Because the higher you are, baby, the greater the fall is. Ha! <laughs> Davia is meeting up with somebody. And she's like, I understand you do business with Vayer Constitute. Th that's correct, your majesty. The next time you trade with them, I want you to carefully scrutinize the check. And he is the head of the Bazari Merchant Corp. Okay. Their check? Yeah. You just need to get them a little scare. <laughs> is that all you need me to do? Yes. That's all for now. As you wish, Your Majesty. Ooh, Navier is a full throttle move with this. Now, she's like... Rashta's scheme to push me and my brother out back when she was a mere mistress. I didn't fight it back then. But now, she'll have a whole set of problems to deal with. That's why, while Rashta's being a dum-dum going after Navier's parents, Navier is coming from her where it really hurts. And your pockets, she's coming after your money because you ain't gonna be nothing when people refuse to do business with the Eastern Empire because of trash bag. <laughs> but then again, Rashta don't think. She, she really don't. She's just living for the moment. She is the true definition of YOLO. <laughs> and meanwhile, in the Eastern Empire, it looked like Rashta got Everly's jewelry. Wow, so she had one of her wicked little minions steal Everly's jewelry. She's holding it, inspecting it, and then she just flung it on the floor. Tell about, that girl is so annoying. I hope she loses sleep over this. And wow, she is stomping on her necklace. Rashta, you have a lot of audacity, girl. 
And then somebody's like, Viscount Lotus, she was here to see you, your majesty. She's like, oh my, what are you doing here? And he's like, he looks awful, he really does. Liberty's missing. So, I'm burning through cash trying to locate her and your fake sister. Have you heard anything that might help me? How would I have heard anything? Maybe she's visiting a friend. <laughs> really? Really? Uh, Rashta was finally in a position to do something about the slave issue in the Eastern Empire. And instead, she decided to use her power to turn somebody else into a slave. Misery love company, baby. How many days has it been? And then we get a flashback of Liberty. She's in the cell. Dad, Alan, Dad. Here, we have the girl everyone's clamoring for. That's why she's so expensive, as you can see. She's a premium offering. I pay double the amount of the highest bid. <gasps> who is this person who's gonna take out? I know Liberty was mean to Rasha, but she, what she did to Rasha wasn't deserving of Rasha to treat her like that. Ask yourself this, why hasn't Rasha came after Viscount Lotusu? Viscount Lotusu literally made you think that your son, your firstborn was dead. And instead, you think that you could use him as a chess piece for you to maintain your position as empress? Like, is she, oh, I'm just so pissed off at her. Because it's like, the person where she should really be coming at left, she's not. Okay, why isn't she as mad at Sophia Shu, okay, instead of her coming for Navia? Uh, Navia didn't do nothing but leave. That's all Navia did. But nonetheless, who got liberty? What are they going to make that poor girl do? Oh, who are you? Those clothes. My apologies for frightening you, miss. I'm Uroro of the Imperial Guard. Oh shoot, he's from the Imperial Guard. Who sent you? I know it ain't Rashta. Could it be Napier? His Majesty ordered me to rescue you. Soviet Shu? What kind of game is Soviet Shu playing? He did? Empress Rashta was the one who orchestrated your abduction. The Emperor has guarded, secretly watched over after the maid injured her with the chair. That's how I discovered her plan. Wow. Wow. So Rashta. Girl, even your own husband know that you ain't she. Your own husband. So Sylvia, she was letting her do whatever she wants to do. And then he's going behind her to clean up the mess. And also I'm guessing, okay, to collect evidence to use to dethrone Rashta. Who, you know what, Sylvia shit? <laughs> you would not have to do all of that if you would have just kept it in your pants, opened your mouth, and had a conversation with Navy about the infertility issue. I'm just saying, baby, you played yourself. Ha, <laughs> you deserve all of this. Ah, <laughs> uh, they're talking about you had to stay here for the time being, but don't forget what happened today. It'll serve you well later. Oh, so they are definitely going to use this against Rashta to dethrone her as she deserves to be dethroned. The Remarried Empress were doing episode 153, the shopping district in the Eastern Empire capital. What are we shopping for, baby? Let's find out. Shopping spree. It's a painting of Navier and Sylvia Shu. Oh. Oh, 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 who is trying to buy that painting? Welcome! Welcome, welcome. He's like, um... Who is this guy? This fancy-looking guy? Why does he look like Sylvia? It is Sylvia Shu. It is Sylvia Shu. What is he doing? He walked in there and said, I would like to buy this painting. And this guy's like, that piece wasn't meant to be for Sarah. I must warn you, um, it's pretty expensive. Are you still interested? And Sylvia, she's like, I don't care how much it costs. 
oh, okay. So he walked in there just to buy the painting of him and Navier. Huh. Navier and I went on a picnic in the palace in the garden. So he's reflecting on when that painting took place. The garden looks absolutely beautiful. Like you guys, this whole entire scene, the picnic basket on the side, the wine. Okay, this is okay, so cute. The playfulness of Sylvia Shu and Navia looking at him with that. Mm. He's like, Navia was ticklish. So she eventually burst out laughing. Oh, she always had a pretty smile. But why? Why is she looking at me? Oh, and he's now, okay, he's pressed up against the painting, yelling, Navier, Navier, I miss you. I wish you would return. Ooh, you did not know how good you had until it was gone. Oh, I feel bad for you, but at the same time, I don't, because you can't treat people like how you treated her and expect for her to be here for you. Talk about please. Navier. Navier left. Navier is gone. Navier is not coming back. Navier is happy in her marriage with Henry, who's not you. So, yeah. So, it's the following day, and Sylvia Shu's going to go check on his pregnant wifey. Rasta. That's who. He wish it was Navier, but, but it's not. Okay. And she's been having stomach troubles. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. He's being nice today for once. B by the way, Your Majesty, you haven't sunk in a while. Our child would love to hear their father sing. I sit down and he starts to sing, Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Everything's gonna be all right. Something like that, okay? Or twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder where you are. And then he's like, Is there anything you'd like to tell me? Hirasha's like, no, there's nothing. And Sylvia Shu's like, are you sure? Take a moment now. Think about it. And she's like, huh, why is he interrogating me? Lately, I've done quite a few things I'd rather he not know about. But there's no need to confess to such a vague question. Girl, he was giving you a chance for you to save yourself, and you didn't. Oh, my God, like, you so slow. But she continues insisting, I have nothing to share, nothing at all. What about you? Don't you have something to tell me? And Sylvia, she was like, not nah, really. But you look like you have a bone to pick with me. And then he pulled out this necklace. What about this? Oh, Rasha pulled it out. And he's like, what's with that tacky trinket, huh? Is this not what you gave to Evelyn when you made her your mistress? Uh, even Sylvia, she was like, girl, you insult my taste. I don't even feel secondhand embarrassment for her. Look at her. <laughs> you feel stupid, don't you, huh? Real big stupid. You thought your man was cheating on you. You have no confirmation whatsoever. Then you went and you stole something from Everly only for you to find out. Girl, he did not make that girl his mistress. You look dumb. You look stupid. Talk about. And Sylvia should try to call her on it. He's like, yo, I assume this belongs to Everly. Did you steal it? And of course, liar, liar, pants on fire. Rosh just like, no, I found it somewhere. I didn't give it back because I don't like you paying attention to other women. Yeah, kind of like how you chase after Duke Ergie. Everybody in the palace saw that, crying and begging for him not to leave you. Okay. Meanwhile, in the Western Empire, where the grass is actually green, Evier and Henry are eating. Yum, yum, yum. What are you guys eating? This is the most delicious omelet I've ever eaten. Have a bite. And Navier's like, hmm, I don't think so. Because that omelet was made by Navier herself. And it is a very, um, soupy omelet. <laughs> I mean, you know, she's great at everything. Except for maybe cooking. <laughs> oh, wow. This is more of a soup than an omelet. I'm glad she thought it. And I didn't have to, like, clearly say, yeah, your omelet shouldn't be 
coming out like cheese. Like, I can't believe Henry is eating it. And then she's just like, oh. and Henry's like, my queen, what's wrong? He's like, I just don't have much of an appetite. You're a bit warm. Shall I call for the palace physician? Huh. What's going on, Navier? Are you being sensitive to smell? I'm sensitive to smell, maybe? Are you finding yourself craving something like pickles, maybe, possibly? Because if that's the case, I don't know if I'm projecting, if I'm imagining, or maybe if I'm just hoping for something that may not come in the next two episodes. But could it be possible? The Remarried Empress episode 154. And this episode starts off so disrespectfully with one person raising their little scary, shaking, trembling hand up to spread some rumors. Talking about, um, there's a rumor going around that, that suggests Her Majesty divorced the Eastern Empire due to her infertility. It's like if you are going to raise your hand and make some kind of lame accusation like that, start doing with your whole chest. You over here in front of the emperor and the empress to bring up a rumor. A rumor. Henry's like, what did you say? Huh? Say it again. Talk about naturally, I don't put stock in such baseless rumors, but you do. Because if you didn't put stock in it, you wouldn't have brought it up. Okay? Your scary looking self. But it's very important in a concerning issue. So I thought it was appropriate to ask Her Majesty about it directly. And Navy is looking at him like, the audacity of these people. Right there in front of my face. Wow, like, I'm doing a meeting. You want to come ask me about my infertility? Okay. So I judge him by his attitude. He's not asking because he actually wants to know. Of course, it isn't true. Someone likely put him up to this. And who is that someone? That someone is none other than Marquise Catron. Okay? And so that is why Navia approaches him directly. Because Navia is like, baby, <laughs> I am not the one, the two, or the three. Okay, if you coming for me, come for me directly. Like, at my name. If they had Twitter back then, Navia would have been that chick. Boy, she would have been sort of fingers don't play. Just like I said, she's like, even if I was infertile, there is no chance of someone from your family being the next empress. And he's over here trying to play dumb talk about, I, I don't quite follow. And they be like straight up, what I'm saying is, your efforts will get you nowhere. I bet he didn't expect me to be so direct. Oh, I knew you were going to be direct because they were all polite. Okay, she walks straight up to him. She's like, I know it's you. Okay, but just know. Whether or not I could have a child, baby, nobody in your family will ever, ever rise up to the position of empress. Because maybe you know she got a lot down, baby. Henry ain't going nowhere. Henry don't want nobody else. Mm -hmm. With nothing else to say, Marquise Carantron was like, I shall take my leave. Yes, how about you leave? To the right, to the right. Okay, exit yourself out of parliament. Okay, we don't need you here. Well, low-key we do, okay? He's, he's really good at his job. He's petty, but he's low-key good at his job from what Henry said later on. But where did Marquise Kenton get all of this confidence? Now, where is all this dip on his chip coming from? Well, you guys guessed it. It's coming from none other than Cherash Beck. It's like between chasing at the Duke Ergie, um, kidnapping and selling this kind of shoes daughter into slavery, plotting with an assassin to unalive Navier's parents and, and, and over here, her husband is pinning and being obsessed about his ex-wife. She still found the time for her to write somebody in a whole different empire about some BS just to get on Navia's nerves. Like, girl, just say you a fan like the rest of us, okay? Get your stuff in line and collect your Teen Navier t-shirt, okay? Because what you're doing right now, it ain't given. It ain't given. But that's where he got this little information from, and he thinks he got something worthy. But the truth is, <laughs> Roush does a dum dumb, and anybody who aligns themselves with her is an even bigger dum dumb. Because how you can't spot that this would be a dumb move? Like, why would you want to bring this up and make an enemy out of your empress over Roush?
You, you're not smart, Marquise Canton. You're not smart at all. And on top of that, he got some additional information talking about Emperor Henry was a notarized womanizer. So it's not shocking that he would have a secret love. A secret lover where? A secret lover where? Still, his lover moved nearby not long after the rumors about the Empress infertility began to grow. What? Nah, man, I will put $10 on everything. Henry don't got no secret love. Mm -mm. No, no, no. You can't convince me of that. Mm -mm. Nah, yeah, you better off convince me that Rashta is a good person before you can convince me that Henry got a secret lover with a secret child. Child, no. Look, I don't believe this at all. It might be his brother. It might be because that child, low key, I'm just saying, it ain't, it, it's not Henry's baby, but it might be his brother, okay? Because his brother was a womanizer before he passed off. He wasn't very loyal to Crystal whatsoever because he didn't like Crystal either. I don't blame him because she's over here pinning for his brother. But um, yeah, the Marquise Canton thinking that he has the upper hand decides to meet up with Henry's alleged lover slash baby mama. And he's like, hey, if he just necklace for you to hold on, it's the mark of my title. That way you can trust me. So that's what he gave her. And she's like, hmm, I don't know, but okay. And he's doing all of this so he could try to put an end to the arrogance of that young couple. Who is the young couple? Navier and Henry, which I don't understand. But a couple of days later, okay, the alleged, okay, you guys, alleged love slash baby mama shows up. And Henry's like, it's been a while, Aaliyah. And she's like, it's Malia, your highness. <laughs> Who are you, Malia? What do you want? Sir? And as for me, it's your majesty now. What did she call him before your highness? Oh, he's like, no, baby, I've upgraded, okay? It's your majesty, your majesty, because I'm an emperor. And Marquis Canton, thinking that he is, like, leading this circus, talking about he's pretending not to know her because the empress is here. But in an unexpected turn of event, Miss Melodia turned around and she said, I'm here because a promise that Marquise Kenton made to me. Marquise Kenton's face when he heard that. He's like, say, what? A promise I made? What's going on here? Now he's confused because he thought he was doing something. He thought he had an upper hand on Henry and Navier. But like I told you guys, that is not Henry's lover slash baby mama. So I don't know who she is yet. But she's definitely not that. But our girl continues, okay? I'm liking her. She's like, he promised to be with me. However, he not only broke his promise and abandoned me, he also ordered me to do something outrageous. I was so angry that I had to come. It, it, it seemed like there's a misunderstanding. That woman claimed to be your majesty's lover, so I brought her here. It, it sounded credible. And she's like, you traitor. How could you do me like this? You dare try to deceive his majesty after giving me this? And she pulled out his necklace that confirmed that they had some type of relationship. Girl, yes, he got played just like Duke Ergie be playing Rashta. Little, little, they, look at Henry's face. Henry's like, ha ha, got you, checkmate. <laughs> look at his face. And so there's over here like, I've been duped. Yep, you gotta play like a fiddle. Play like a fiddle. Hey, play like a fiddle. The emperor set me up. Yes, yeah, because you a dumb dumb who's following trash bag. Like, that's what you get. Nobody feels bad for you, okay? And now Marquise Kenton won't be making any more moves because it would be damaging for him if he, if it got out that he tried to slender Napier. That, that's that. Um, mm. Just like that checkmate, we won. Ha ha, in his face. While we all could laugh at Marquise Kenton, there is one thing we cannot laugh at. It's how obsessed with Navier Sophia she has gotten. In the words of Mariah Carey, why are you so obsessed with me? Uh huh, uh huh. Like, he really got the painting switch to have Navier looking at him. Boy, the, the Lulu, okay? 
That man is sipping on a big picture of delusional. Don't believe me? Look at him. He's sipping on red wine while I stare at her picture. Just staring at the painting like that. Like, sir. Okay, it's giving soccer. It is giving. You are beyond delusional at this point. It is giving somebody. Please get him some help because this is not cute. That's what it's giving, okay? Because he's over here just staring at her painting, reminiscing about the best thing he had in Lost because of his dumbness. <laughs> we don't feel bad for you, Sophia. You made your bed, okay, with trash, and you laid in it. You procreated in that trash bed. And now you have, hopefully, an adorable baby coming out of it because the baby will never be trash even though the mama is in the dad question mark because there's been a lot of rumors look look yeah i'm not trying to be that kind of person but rumor has it that's rumors the baby might not be so yeah i didn't hear it from me okay i don't want to be like those people who hang out with marquis canton spreading bad rumors i'm just telling y'all what i heard the baby might not be might not be his baby okay keep that to yourself don't go around here <clears throat> saying that because we don't know for a fact yet. But if it ain't his baby, whose baby is it? Duke Ergie? Possibly. Or maybe Alan. I don't think it could be Alan. Could it possibly be? Because it's like, girl, how many people were you with at the same time? Like, there's nothing wrong with you, you know, being a free spirit, like, doing all that. But... Can we know who the daddy is? But let, let's leave that alone, okay? We'll discuss that some other time. Right now, we have some good news, okay? Miss Everly has her magic bag. Do you believe in magic? Da 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 da. Because Everly got her magic bag. Yay! So Henry did keep his word and he gave her back her magic. Oh, I'm so happy because Everly was like so sad without her magic and i know she means a lot to navy because navy was personally sponsoring her so to hear that she got her magic bag has made me so happy hopefully when she goes to visit navy as she stays i don't want her going back to what's his face empire i already forgot the name of his empire that's how well it is now that trash bag is running the place the remarried empress episode 155 a few hours earlier, what was happening? The saloon for distinguished guests in the South Palace. So here's our girl, Everly. Everly, baby girl, what are you doing? And she's like, why even invite me if they just go and to shun me? I just remember something I heard recently. And who is shunning her? Well, it is none other than Trash Bag's fake parents. Audacity of these grown people old enough to be Everly's parents, okay, and that's still a theory going around that they may actually be her parents, to sit over here and bring that young girl to the saloon just to make fun of her. Like, don't you get how pathetic that makes you look? You are pathetic, just like Trash Bag. And I'm really hoping they don't turn out to be Everly's parents because she is too good to have parents like that. Look at her. But she do low-key look like them. I'm not even gonna lie. Look, look, the eyes, just like his eyes. That's why I was our girl Everly isn't gonna let that face so she said these people are so predictable. And right around that time, look what's happening. This swirl love. I'm guessing magic. Let's go ahead and say magic. Do you believe in magic? Sir, sir. Okay, who is this Dumbledore looking type of fellow? Hello? I told you, no running in the lab. My magic came back. Everly magic came back, you guys. Do you believe in magic? Yes, I do believe in magic. Henry did it. He got her her magic back. Yes, look at her little happy face. I'm so happy for her. Now we're back to the present. And who is hitting her, her necklace? Have a look at this, Everly. Is this your necklace? Yes. Yes, it is. How did you find it? Who gave it to you? Well, the Majesty. Okay, Sylvia Shu. I mean, Shu. The Empress, Sylvia Shu, gave it to me. 
<sighs> But old Dumbledore's like, yes, the Emperor found it. And he brought it back to Everly because, you know, it matched the description of what she was looking for. He's like, is this the necklace indeed restoring some of your mana? So come to find out that's what Henry sent to Everly to help her get back her magic. That necklace, that trash bag had the audacity to stump on. Technically, if we knew or if Everly knew that was a gift from Emperor Henry, that would count as treason what trash bag did. I'm just saying, okay? Should you be able to recover all of it? Ooh, so it does help her get back her magic, okay? Of course, Everly is not no dum-dum. That's why she is our little favorite cinnamon rose. She's like, how did the Empress stumble upon it when I lost it in the South Palace? Yep, that's how he stumbled across it, okay? That's how. His pregnant trash. Could that woman be involved? You know it, baby girl. <laughs> that woman is indeed involved because that woman got too much time on her head okay she could be learning how to run the imperial palace how to be a good empress but she instead chooses to do everything else but that <laughs> but another young magician comes up and she's like omg a necklace that restores mana can i see it she didn't even wait for a yes or a no she just touched the necklace like girl you don't even know what it really does because when bam it took away her magical powers. Ooh, we girl. This is why you should wait for somebody to give you a clear yes or no before you touch somebody's stuff. Just like that, she fell over. She lost her magic, y'all. No more magic for you, baby. Mm -mm -mm. And from what I can see so far, that necklace, it restores power to Everly. Okay? Very particular to Everly. And everybody else, it'll steal your power. Like, don't touch her necklace i don't know if henry did that on purpose or if it got damaged when trash bags you know she stepped on it i'm not too sure what happened but like i said a necklace with the power to both restore and drain mana aka magic over your shoe had to be involved because it involves you know his people in magic leaving their body so he's like who gave you this necklace and evelyn's like the dean it was from an anonymous sponsor. He thought it would help me sense mana if I kept it near me. He didn't offer any other information. No. And so Sylvia she was like, I had to make a trip to Willowa to get to the bottom of this. When he makes a trip, he's going to see the portrait of Henry in that school. And he's going to put two and two together if he's not a total dummy. Let's see. We shall see. Yeah. <laughs> But Sylvia, she don't even finish this conversation because one of his aides come running. He's like, your majesty, your majesty, I got something to tell you. And Sylvia, she's like, what is going on here? Like, come to find out the office of Bayer Constitune has received reports of people forging checks issued by merchant groups. And they would like to swap the ones we've issued for new ones just to be safe. Okay, so they brought that to I'm getting, guessing the accounting or banking department of the empire. And so they wanted to check if the crown's check were forged, which are the checks that Rashta has been going around using. Oh my goodness, they're about to find some forgery. Rashta, girl, you going to jail. So we got this guy over here. He got his glasses and his microscope. And he's just looking really closely at the check and the and get. Because if he found some forgery, my dude is going to report it. Ooh, I pray for Rashta's sake that she has not been forging checks. But we all know Rashta is not the smartest. <laughs> I mean, he's putting two and two together, you guys. He's like, we haven't issued any new checks to the Imperial family in a year. So there shouldn't have been one issued in Empress Rashta's name. Oh, that is so true. So where did she get the checks? Rashta, 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 Rashta. But if someone used the check that was originally issued in another person's name, a.k.a. Navier, ooh, they're starting to realize that she is not as sweet and innocent as she made herself out to be. The serial number on the check issued in Empress Navia's name and the one 
Empress Rashjeh used to dominate all the same. Does this mean Empress Rashjeh made a donation using the funds of the person she replaced? Yes, it's exactly that. This man is so like flabbergasted about what's going on. He's like, how disgraceful. Ooh, talking about I had hopes that an empress with commoner origin would usher in a new era. Child, we all had hopes that an empress with commoner origins would usher a new era. But instead, okay, Rasha's too busy over here plotting and killing and ruining other people's lives than for her to be concerned about the people who she used to be dressed like. She ain't making no changes to benefit the commoners, the slaves, or nothing. Okay, she is selfish. Mm, 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 mm. So what are you going to do about it, sir? Well, one thing, he's not going to ignore it. He's like, I can't ignore this. Ooh, he about to go tell that reporter. You guys know that reporter don't like but Rashta. Ever since Rashta got his sister, do, 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 he has been out to get her neck. Okay. I have to contact that journalist. It is over for Rashta. Girl, forgery now. You forging checks. Oh my, that is so, so disgraceful, so tasteless, so, mm. Okay, if she was living in 2023, girl, the FBI would be knocking on your door like, knock, 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 where you at? It's time for you to go to jail. <laughs> Ooh, and two days later, you guys, the article comes out. Here's Rasha in bed reading the article, and she saw what they wrote about her, the truth. She is shooketh. I can't read it, but I'm guessing... It tells people how she's been forging checks. I knew it'll be discovered eventually. Also, she knew it was going to be discovered eventually. Okay. But I didn't expect it to happen so soon. Oh, that's Sylvia Shu in a thought. Sylvia Shu knew about the forged checks. He knew. He has been setting up his wife from the get-go for failure. Like, sir, you want Navia to come back to you? You want Navia to come back to you like, sir, you just horrible. You such a horrible bitch. So here she, like, you could have at least tried to steer Roster in the right direction. You literally just gave her a, I don't know. I don't want to, like, paint any type of imagery. But he basically gave her a rope and she is, you know, herself. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, it's an emergency. Her Majesty, what's going on? <gasps> She's giving birth prematurely. Rosh just having a baby. Oh my goodness. Look, we don't like Rosh still, but the baby, I'm excited for you guys. Oh, I wonder what she's having, a little girl, a little boy. All I do know about that baby is it's going to look like the oldest child that Rosh just has, Ian, Ian Lotus Shoe, and I already know, just from seeing Ian, that that baby is going to be so adorable. Woo -woo. It's kind of funny that talking about the baby's coming prematurely. By what I seen, Rasha looked like she was already 40 weeks. Like, that belly was given nine months and up. You know what I was saying? But let me go ahead and mind my business. <laughs> But that baby's coming. You guys, so I'm super duper excited for the next episode. But you who's watching this video, you don't have to wait for Cassie to find out what gender the baby is, what's the baby name. You don't have to wait what you can do. You can click the link in my description box and it's going to take you straight to Webtoon where if you want to, you can read eight more new episodes on the app, okay? Eight more new episodes, including the episodes where the baby is out in a box, okay? Now, when you do that, don't you come back over here and spoil it. I don't want to know what the baby name is in the comments. I want to find out myself. But what you can do is give me a clue. What's the first letter that baby name is? Please don't tell me the name that baby Rashta Jr. Because if they did there, <laughs> you can go ahead and spoil that for me. If the baby name is Rashta Jr., y'all can spoil that for me because that's just The We Married Empress episode 156. So this episode starts off with the journalist, okay? You guys remember the journalist who's out for Rashta? Yeah. So it starts off with us seeing how he came about writing his article. He said, think about the time Empress Rashta donated a large sum, a 20 million crew, 
after her wedding. So he was just scribbling his little heart out. He continues by talking about how it's common knowledge that imperial checks can only be issued under the emperor or empress name. But the merchant group that is responsible for producing the imperial checks hasn't released any new ones in a year. He got this information from the accountant dude who was just so disgusted by what Rashta did. Continues by saying this means the money Empress Rashta donated actually came from former Empress Navier. Dun, dun, dun. That's why all the people of that empire thought Navier just left them. That she just walked out of their lives and wasn't even thinking about them. Not knowing that she prepared so much for y'all because she truly loved her people. It was just her whack ex-husband couldn't see what he had in front of him. She might have left that money as an eye of kindness for her successor, a woman of humble origin. Is it right to use something that belongs to another person as if it was yours? Ooh, we, the Eastern time is coming for Rasta's throat, baby. Ha! <laughs> and yes, is it right to falsely represent someone else's generosity as your own? It's deplorable. And dressed like that, the fall of Rashta has begun. But with the fall of Rashta comes new life. Rashta's giving birth, you guys, the baby. Like I said, okay, I'm sorry. I'm a sucker for baby. I don't care if trash bag is the biggest trash around, okay? She's giving birth to a little baby. So I'm low-key excited, all right? Don't judge me, okay? Push, you must push harder, your royal trash bag. Come on, you can do it. You are almost there. Ah. And she's crying. Did she do it? I had hoped that things would be different in the palace. But I guess it doesn't matter where I give birth. Oh. Okay, well, I, back then, they didn't have epidurals. You know what I'm saying? So you always going to feel that pain, Rasha. It doesn't matter if you're in the royal palace or in a barn. You're going to feel the pain, childbirth. From what I've heard, is it um, a walk in the park? It still feels like my body was torn apart. Ah, how's the baby? The baby is a healthy little princess, your majesty. Oh, I don't like that face. Why are you reacting like that, Rasha? You just gave birth to a healthy, a healthy baby girl. She's, she's a princess. You know, I read a theory a couple of episodes ago that summarized how Rasha is a female misogynist. And the way she's behaving after giving birth to her daughter is definitely giving that type of vibe. I might have to do a video on that because mm, you just keep getting even more deplorable Rashta hey girl she is crying she is crying just look at my first child so this was Rashta when she was given the baby okay so now Sylvia she has the baby and he's like just look at my first child isn't she lovely? She is cute, y'all. Yeah. Isn't she lovely? She is so cute. What's her name? Somebody gave me a clue and told me that her name starts with the letter G. So Grace. Grace is a pretty name. Maybe it is Grace. What other name? Gloria. Ooh, Gloria Estefan. Ha! Ah, there are still a lot of child care books I've yet to read. There's a great deal your papa has to do, my dear. First... We must hire a nanny to tend to my child in my absence. And this guy's like, pardon? Surely he can't be applying. Yes, he is. He's implying. He don't want Rashto around the baby because she is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Okay? Majesty, do you not intend to entrust the child to Empress Rashto? I can't leave an infant under the care of someone who will harm small animals without a thought when things don't go her way. Bingo, because, yep, anybody who can harm small animals is given so snappy. Moving forward, this guy right here, he's like, um, I do not mean to pry your majesty, but may I ask if you intend to father a second child with the empress? He's like, um, 
My successor is right here. Oh. So we are sure this said this baby right here, this little princess is gonna be the next empress. That's right, so we are sure. Step up. Change things around for your daughter. Okay. Pardon? What do you mean? What matters is that this child carries my blood. Bring across, she does. Whether she's a girl or a boy. Th there has never been a female monarch in the history of the Eastern Empire, Your Majesty. Only princes born to empress consorts have the right to rule. Is that merely a custom? This child will make history by being the first reigning empress. Sylvia, she's like, he don't care. He's like, he don't care how anybody else will. He's going to make his daughter the empress. That's why Sylvia, she's he's like, he don't want no more kids with Rasha. All he needs is this one little baby right here. Look, I'm really hoping that even if the baby's not his, okay, that Sylvia, she still continues to be a dad to her. I'll take my time quietly. Prepare for her succession until the time is right. Keep this a secret from Rashtra. Oh, you keep it so many secrets from your wife. I ended things with the woman I love most to keep this child safe. Oh, she is adorable. It was odd to protect my daughter. I would name this child Glorium. <gasps> That is actually a real pretty name, you guys. So that all the glory in the world is hers. I will see to it that the world is yours for the taking, Glorium. Oh, I'm not going to lie, you guys. This side of Sylvia Shue. Sylvia Shue might be a crabby husband, a subpar emperor. But the love that he has for this baby... It is at an all-time high. Like, that is so adorable. I see the baby has Rasha's blonde, whitish hair. Hopefully, the baby will have Sophia Shu's eyes. But this is so cute to see how much love he already has for this baby. And he also recognized the sacrifice, you know, he made for her to be here. Well, I wouldn't say it was much of a sacrifice. He just laid in between Rashtra's legs. But nonetheless, nonetheless, he had to give up, you know, the woman that he claims he loves in order to ensure that the baby um, has the ability to rule. So, yeah. So, while Rashtra has given birth in the Western Empire, something else is going on. What is going on? We are prepared for Henry's birthday. His birthday is coming up real soon and is that Napier making a cake that is so cute she's like the nobles will surely ask what I'm getting him to avoid gifting him the same thing and Napier is like I'm getting him this for a gift I plan on bathing in the nude with his majesty because I'm gifting myself wet and covered in bubbles Ooh, girl <laughs> Yeah, Napier is giving, okay? Empress in the daytime, but for you guys, I, for her hubby, I am not judging Napier. Go on with your bad self. Girl, tell me, oh, I can't say that. You could definitely say that. Let them know the gift that you got for him. They can never compete with their girl because you giving him all that. Oh, then talk about covered in bubbles. Ooh, Napier. But... She's baking him a cake. She's like, Henry was very touched when I made that crude omelet. So I'd like to bake a cake and include it along with my other official gifts. <laughs> Look. And then he could eat a cake on your body afterwards. Navy, are you a lot right? But tasting the cake proves that Navy can't cook. She's great at a lot of things, you guys. But, but the cooking and the baking just ain't it. This is not it. I mean, it's lucky simple. You just follow the recipe. But I, I don't know what she's doing wrong. Like, literally, you just follow exactly. And they tell you two tablespoons of sugar. You put exactly two tablespoons of sugar. Don't put no more. Don't put no less. The key thing when it comes to bacon, I can't say for cooking, but for bacon is to find a good baker 
and follow that recipe down to the T. So anyhow, her mother came in the kitchen and her mom was like, yo, have you been trying to bake a cake this whole time? And Navia confessed that she's trying to be like her mama and her mother used to bake a cake for them every year for her and her brother Kosar. And she wanted to give her husband a similar style, you know, a trophy style cake. And her mother is like, ah, this is why I wanted to stop you. Please don't be shocked with what I'm about to say, but the truth is, the head cook baked those cakes. Navia's like, but, but what? Mom is like, yeah, it was the head cook, you know. I would have him cook it, and then before you guys get home, I would put on the apron, cover myself with a little bit of flour, you know, mess up my hair and be like, ha ah, look, I spent all this time baking a cake. And so the mother's like, get a delicious cake and say that you made it. Like, stop stressing yourself and do like me. But Navier being as hard-headed as she is, she's like, nah, that would be a lie. I'm not going to lie to him. Like, no, I'm good. And learning this from her mother has kept Navier up. Like, she's supposed to be cozying up with her husband. And instead, she's thinking about this. She's like, I had no idea my mother kept such a secret. Well, it's true that I'd never have known if she hadn't told me. But I feel Henry was more happy with the thought that I made the omelet than how it actually tastes. He was, girl, just give him your bad tasting cake, okay? It don't matter if that cake is salty. I was watching my demon. You know what? Let, let me stop. Let me stop right here. Because if anybody else is watching my demon and they haven't gotten to that episode about the salt cake, I don't want to ruin it for y'all. But just know that episode was so cute. Let's go back instead to Navier, who's admiring her beautiful husband. Tell about he's also lovable. That's why it's dangerous. Do I love him or do I not want to love him? I'm not sure. And after she's thought that, she's thinking these type of thoughts, Henry opened his eyes, he joked, and then he jumped out of bed. Oh, okay. Baby, it's like, Henry, what are you? Crack, what is this? What, what is this coming out of the bed? What is happening here? Navia got ice power. This is giving clove from Sub-Zero. Anybody else reading that? Navia is confused. I'm confused. You're confused. Why is there ice coming out of the bed? Like, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody do have ice power. After all, Henry could turn into a bird. <laughs> so, I'm just saying, well, we'll have to wait until next week. So, that wraps up this chapter, folks. I'm concluding the video right here. Stay tuned for the thrilling developments in the next episode. And don't forget to show your support with a like and subscribe, fueling my motivation to bring you even more captivating comic chapters in the future. Until next time, happy reading.